What is going on, Life Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about when does fat burning restart when intermittent fasting? When you're re entering intermittent fasting, is there something different for intermittent fasting alumni or people who were doing intermittent fasting before? Now, I know what you're thinking wasn't this video already done before, but I'm actually going to touch on something really interesting. Rather than just focusing on the time itself, I'm also going to talk about increased energy expenditure time. We're going to go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. Okay, before we start, this video is brought to you by The Coldest Water. Literally the perfect name for this water bottle because it's not just in hyperbole, it actually is The Coldest Water Bottle. You can keep your water cold for not just 24 hours, but 36 hours. An amazing number which is unparalleled and no other water bottle can come close to it. It is my preferred water bottle and during these times of quarantine and social distancing, you wanna make sure you have your own water bottle that you can refill that you don't let anyone else touch. And if you're gonna go ahead and do that, the best refillable water bottle is without a doubt, the coldest water. They have a giveaway down below as well as a link to purchase your own coldest water bottle. Just remember to use the promo code FLEDGE for 10% off every order you do with the coldest water. That promo code does two things. It helps support this channel and gives you a 10% off these awesome water bottles. Now let's go ahead and jump into the video. Now the first thing I want to get out of the way is what we've talked about before, which is the 8 to 12 hours. We've talked about this already, we made a complete video, and this is something that's unique to the intermittent fasting protocol because that's when you get into that post-absorptive range to start burning body fat, when the mechanism starts to do that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there might be inherent benefits to it energy expenditure wise. That's just talking about the physiology of what happens when you go into a fast, how it breaks down from not being a fast to being a fast. And just a quick summarization of that is if you start eating, you have to get into this thing called a post absorptive range where your body is past the point where it's absorbing the energy that you consume. There is nothing else currently to absorb. You have fasted past that range. Now your body starts to utilize internal energy sources and that's of course your free fatty acids your body fat that gets broken up and that gets oxidized to provide that energy using the beta hydroxybutyrate through the liver filtering your body fat and turning it into ketones to provide an energy source so ketones is basically a replacement for glucose so that's the beginning and the end of that the post-absorptive range the internal mechanism of fasting is just from 8 to 12 hours. Now, if you re-enter uh, intermittent fasting after doing intermittent fasting before, you might get into the fastest state quicker, quicker than normal, believe it or not, because your body has already adapted to certain elements when it comes to intermittent fasting because you've done it already before. Even if you come off of it, yes, it might be difficult to come back on, but it still does create this sort of biological memory, so it goes and bounces back into the fasting routine and gets you into the fastest state pretty quick. Of course, this depends on how long you've paused uh, the intermittent fasting protocol, but I know that with this quarantine thing and everybody being at home right now, it, it's easy to fall off the wagon due to boredom, due to just not having things to do and being at home and not being able to do anything and then just having food available to you. I know it's tough out there with intermittent fasting and that's why I'm making videos to tailor to your current situation right now but let's go ahead and jump into the added energy expenditure where your resting metabolic rate actually increases now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the number 48 hours now don't jump and click off the video and say wait 48 hours I need to fast for 48 hours done or I need to fast for 48 hours I'm out of here I'm not doing that it's not 48 hours that you need to fast for. It's up to 48 hours where they see an energy expenditure increase. This energy expenditure increase is happening because norepinephrine is increasing due to glucose concentration decreasing. Basically because of the lack of glucose, the fight or flight hormone is increased to norepinephrine uh, so that you can find food. This has its own kind of thermogenic 
synthesizer for the fact that it wants you to be ready to run, ready to hunt, lift, pull, things like that. These primitive things that had to be done before when you didn't have food. And glucose concentration reducing is a heavy indicator that you have not eaten. This is what they call early starvation. Early starvation is simply intermittent fasting. Two studies, one done in 1990 and the other done in 2000. The one done in 1990 was in the American Journal of Physiology by Dr. Manzel and colleagues, and it looked at 11 normal weight adults. They looked at day one and they looked at day two. So what they saw was around day two, there was this steady increase. And this was around the 36 hour mark, but they only looked up to 48 hours and it was continuing to grow. Now, the study done in 2000, however, was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition by Dr. Zayner and colleagues, and this looked past the 48-hour mark. They use a very similar system and a similar study design to the study that I just mentioned in the American Journal of Physiology, where they had 11 normal weight adults. And they had day one, day two, day three, and day four. It was a steady increase from day one to day two to day three. However, it fell on day four. Now more studies looking at the specific mechanism have to be done because they thought that the norepinephrine in and of itself, because of its steady increase, was also bringing up with it the energy expenditure. But they noticed that because glucose concentration was still low, norepinephrine was still going up, but the energy expenditure was reducing. Now they feel that this is probably happening because of the adaptive thermogenesis effect. Now this doesn't mean that fasting has lended to an adaptive thermogenesis effect because you see that day one, two, and three, you're still increasing your energy expenditure. But if you haven't eaten for day one, two, and three, that is pretty taxing on you in terms of the calorie intake. Because yes, you are fasting, but you also are not taking in calories, so you are at zero calorie intake for all of those days. So after the 48 hour mark, there is a decrease that is seen. Remember, the first study that I talked about, the one in 1990, did not test past 48 hours. The second study, the one that I'm talking about now, did test after the 48 hours and they saw that there was a decrease. So this is super interesting because this gives an edge to fasting, to early starvation, which is what the study called it, but that's basically fasting. And as I mentioned many times before, that 48 hour mark always seems to be that diminishing return, that, that point where you start to drop off, where the benefits start to drop off. We don't know why specifically, but there are many theories in terms of maybe the adaptive thermogenesis, the body reacting to the very lengthy amount of fasting. Now, don't get me wrong, there might be people out there that say, well, I fast for seven days and I lost all this weight. Yeah, you did lose weight because you are taking in zero calories. You're not taking in any calories at all. But just keep in mind that your body is now adapting and trying to reduce the energy output. So when you do start to eat, you may have to further reduce the calories that you have to take in to still continue to lose weight or even be at a maintenance level because your body has adapted to the fact that you haven't eaten anything past 48 hours. All these studies continue to indicate that 48 hours should be the cutoff period for anyone who is practicing intermittent fasting. Now, if you fast longer and you like to do it, that's fine, but if you wanna go within the realm of the studies, it's best to cut it at 48 hours. So there you have it, guys. For the mechanism switchover to go into body fat instead of glucose, it takes eight to 12 hours. If you're restarting intermittent fasting, it's probably still gonna be in the earlier time frames, like eight or nine or 10 hours, as opposed to 11 or 12 hours to get into that post absorptive range because your body has this biological memory set up from when you were doing intermittent fasting in the past. If you started intermittent fasting for the first time and never did anything like the keto diet or anything that required your body to utilize uh, ketones for energy as opposed to glucose, you may not be fat adapted enough that you probably take about 11 or 12 hours to get into that post absorptive range until you become more fat adapted and you'll get closer to the eight hours. The body's energy expenditure also shows signs of increasing, which helps you burn more calories 
calories, not just fat, but calories specifically. And this has been seen in studies where they go up to 48 hours with a steady increase. But beyond the 48 hour mark, it does show a decrease. And this is tied to norepinephrine, which increases as a fight or flight once glucose concentration reduces because you're not consuming any food. I hope it wasn't too confusing for you and very informative. And of course, as always guys, I wanna thank my patrons for my Patreon. I'm gonna go ahead and put their names right up here.